Zach Life Beat Depression on its day 698. <laughs> and I'm a tad late. I apologize for that. And thank you for tuning in and showing up for you and for others. Welcome back to another somatic healing session to wipe out depression. As you guys know, today is, and every day, is a martial arts for mental health show. We tune into those mental health tools. And today we're coming at you from indoors because there's a live thunderstorm happening outside. And uh, it's not so much the rain, it's more the lightning. Trying not to die out here doing what I love. So <laughs> we're tuning in from indoors, live from the Sake House in Kearney, New Jersey. And we're going to get in another standard three rounds of progress and success. It'll be three minute rounds, one minute breaks in between. Catch your breath, drink some water, check in on you, make sure you're not pushing too hard. We want to make sure that we're challenging ourselves every day to our skill level. And as that level increases, we can increase that challenge and continue to grow through that flow zone. So one of the mental health tools we talk about is gratitude. Gratitude today going out to Lisa the Luminary for being the first one in and to George. George DeLone, thank you so much for the support. Appreciate you out there. Uh, you guys have been, Lisa, you've been consistent for over a year. It's inspiring. You've got to be on day 398, two away from big 400, and that is a whole lot of progress and success. So shout out to Lisa. For that grateful for you being here through all of those times through all of those days um for myself through this journey helping me feel less alone and also for others showing others what they can do just by being that change that you want to see in the world so thank you so much lisa for that uh shout out to mad with hats and to luca uh for supporting the cause appreciate you guys and girls out there talked about our gratitude think about your piece of gratitude for the day and that'll help put you in that positive mindset and then we're going to go into the second mental health tool, which is progress tracking tool. Keeping track of the number of days that you do show up for yourself and fight forwards. That number builds over time into more self-confidence, self-esteem, self-validation, and physical proof that you are overcoming the debilitating effects of depression because you did get up and fight forwards no matter what your mind or body was telling you this morning. So please do keep track of that number. Share it with others. It helps inspire progress and inspires progress out here and it's uh one of the best things we can do for each other it's been 698 days for me the sack man let me know how many days it's been for you and that guy has no legs <laughs> lucas lucas said that guy has no legs that's bob he never has legs well that's not true i think there's a bob with legs now but for the longest time bob had no legs didn't stop him from doing what he wants to do what he loves the most and that is getting punched in the face. So Bob is a professional training dummy. And those are the type of dummies that we like to punch in the face out here. If you've got a Bob at home, make sure you're using it. Uh, it's a great way to improve your technical accuracy, improve your skill level in your training, and also get a better somatic release than just punching air. Uh, shout out to Mad With Hats. He said, Bob, Bob, made it to another Dizay. Respect to Lisa, killing it. We're all killing it. Respect. Heck yeah. Mutual respect out here going out all around to everybody staying consistent. Mad with hats. I know you're over 100 days of progress out there and that's something to be proud of as well. Um, when you get a chance, please do share your number. And Luca, I don't know if you're keeping track of those days, but I hope you are, buddy, because the more that you keep track of, the better and the more effective that number becomes. Let's shift Bob over a little bit. And we're missing something. We're missing the sweet 80s boombox. Let me grab that so we can set the mood. Yeah. There it is. Got to get some of that 80s fighting spirit involved and uh, help ourselves the most ways possible. So when it comes to an effective routine and your training for mental health, there are hundreds, if not dozens to hundreds of ways that we can help ourselves by combining the ones that work for you as an individual into a super effective routine. You can give yourself a fighting chance at knocking out, uh, wow, that's a lot of puns, <laughs> at knocking out depression and anxiety from your life. Remember, you are an individual and you got to find your individual way forwards. Um, there's not one path for everybody. Um, so you do have to stick with those things when you do find things that work please do stick with those things that work for you and continue to grow continue to grow forwards make progress the goal that's one way you can enjoy success every single day 
Now, we've got the tunes, we've got water, super important, checking in on ourselves. Today, we're going to talk about some knee strikes. So we're going to add in for our martial arts lesson. We'll be talking about a long knee. Straight forwards, long knee. Oos, boom. We'll be talking about an angled knee. Oos, from the side. And we'll be talking about a high knee. Oos, boom, right up there, right into the chin. So for those three knee strikes, we'll break them down slow. We'll go through the mechanics on those. We'll work them into our normal training routine. And we'll be drilling fundamentals as well. That means jabs and crosses. Fundamentals are always fundamental. And uh, we should always include them in our training routine. It's never a bad idea to practice those basics, refine those basics, because that gives us the foundation. When I was learning how to hit the bag, first time I got the bag, I felt that somatic release, but I was also injuring my hands, I was injuring my wrists. So uh, until I learned my fundamentals, I couldn't get as effective as a training routine as I wanted. And then once I did learn my fundamentals, everything revolved around that, allowed me to really let loose, really unload on that bag, get that stress out, and then build a cre creative routine from there with other tools that I picked up and other skills along the way. So please do always practice those fundamentals. Even if you talk to pro fighters, they'll tell you they're still practicing fundamentals, no matter how long they've been in the game. That being said, let's break down those knee strikes a little bit for the long, shout out to Slayer Ken, thank you for being here. Uh, so for the long knee, and Ken's sharing his days, 306 days of consecutive progress, hasn't missed a day, 306 days. Shout out to Ken, thank you for being here and thank you for being inspiring with your progress as well. So let's talk about our Muay Thai position. If you're not familiar with it, check out the stance guides on sacklifeofficial.com. If you are, uh, we're gonna be in a nice balanced stance. You can visualize a square on the ground, ball of front foot in the top corner, ball of back foot in the bottom corner. Bend in those knees, guard high by the brow line, close the fingers, tuck the thumbs, and when we step in, we're gonna step in for one, two, step in, twist through for the jab, twist through for the cross, rotate back, guard is high. Now for the knee strikes, when we talk about the knee strikes, we'll talk about the long knee first. For the long knee from our Muay Thai stance, what we wanna do is swing through the hip and send that knee forwards as our shoulders go back. It's kind of a counterbalance. Ooh, a lot of lightning coming through. So as a kind of a counterbalance to that hip rotation, right? Oosh. The knee's going forwards. We're also extending through the hip. You can put some hip rotation in there. So having the proper stance, and a nice balanced stance with the front foot angled slightly out from our opponent, that opens up our hips for a little extra hip rotation. And when we toss that knee forwards, we want to send the shoulders back to counterbalance and add in that rotation, right, rotational force. We're bringing the foot up as close as we can to the booty, making that knee nice and sharp and we're driving that knee forwards, and that is called a long knee. Straight forwards, right into the guts, boom, of that depression dummy in front of us. We're also using the hand as a counterweight. You'll notice the hand swings, boom, at the same time as that knee strike, counterbalancing that force and letting us put more velocity into it. Now we can let the shoulders go back, but we want to tuck that chin. Don't let your head toss back. And by tucking the chin, that'll help you with that balance. Improve balance throughout the striking. Better the balance, better the form, better technique. Means more power and a more effective kick. So that's the long knee. Sending that knee straight forwards. Whoosh. Chopping the arm at the same time. Open hips, right? A little bit of hip rotation. I know there's a lot of moving parts there. But you can break them down one by one. Tune in to each individual one and see where you can refine on each individual level, right? Sometimes when I'm practicing that long knee, I'm thinking about really rotating the hips. Sometimes I'm thinking about really getting that foot closer and keeping the foot pointed. So many small points we can tune into, which is why um, there's plenty of room for intrinsic focus, to direct our focus into the body, into the moment. And that's one of the things that takes us out of those ruminating worries about the future or the past. So. Both a good physical training tool and also a good mental health tool to uh, get ourselves into the present moment where we're capable and powerful. It's called grounding. It's another form of it happening usually on a subconscious level out here, but we're bringing it to you on a conscious level. So we've got the long knee. Whoosh, we got that down. Now we're going to talk about the high knee. For the high knee, it's a little bit different 
This one, we're gonna swing through the hip, but we're gonna send that knee straight up the center line, right? Straight up the center line, boom. And this time, you'll notice the shoulders are not rotating back because I'm not sending the hips forwards. We're just swinging through that hip like the hip is a hinge. We're gonna swing that knee straight up from the back. So when we're in our balanced stance, we're visualizing our opponent. Our goal is to crack him right in the chin with this knee. In order to get the knee up that high, we're gonna bring that knee straight forward, straight forward, swing it straight up. We're chopping the arm as well. But this time, to add a little height, we're gonna lift up on that front calf muscle. So we're gonna lift up on that calf muscle and shift that weight to the front foot. Now, don't worry if your knee doesn't get that high at first. Over time with practice, it'll get closer and closer and get that knee right up there, smashing through the face of that depression dummy. For now, if you don't have the flexibility or the training yet, just bring it up as high as you can, as high as comfortable, boom. <clears throat> and remember, don't rotate the shoulders back. Keep the hips and shoulders curled like a spring, and boom, send it right up, right up the center line, straight forwards for that high knee to the chin. The chop is the same, boom. We're swinging through the hip and sending that knee straight up, keeping the guard high in the front. That's our high knee, angled knee time. Let's talk about it. We're gonna do the whole thing from switch stance as well. We'll practice from southpaw just to mix it up, keep ourselves on our toes, keep it entertaining, keep it fun. Shout out to Wen Roses Blossom, thank you for being here. We're breaking down some knee strikes before we get into the lesson. It will be our standard lesson today. So I do want you guys and girls to challenge yourselves to your specific skill level. Make sure you're giving yourself a challenge out there. We talked about the high knee. We talked about the long knee. Right now we're going to talk about an angled knee and for that angled knee what we want to do Instead of just swinging through the hip We're going to lift the ankle and the knee at kind of the same time We're going to lift them on the same plane. We're going to shift our body weight forwards and kind of angle back Bringing that ankle and knee up on the same plane and then we're going to twist torso comes in the same towards the direction of the knee as it's coming in so we want to make the knee like a clamp. We're bringing the torso in this way, we're bringing the knee in this way. Our goal is the ribs, hitting those rib cage, that rib cage on that depression dummy. So you see, boom, that knee comes around on an angle. You'll notice again, hand is chopping as a counterweight, as a counterbalance, but this time because our knee is up on an angle, we wanna chop, boom, chop on an angle. And turn those shoulders into it, turn the hips into it as well, bring the rotational force together for a nice powerful angled knee kick to the ribs. <laughs> now for this one, again, chin is tucked. We don't have to send our shoulders back, keep our shoulders right where we are, right in our balance, Muay Thai stance, <laughs> angled knee, boom, long knee, <laughs> and high knee, <laughs> boom. Notice the whole time that guard stays high on the lead hand, right? On the angled knee, it moves to the side, boom, a long knee, boom, stays there, high knee, boom, stays there. And then you've got three different knee variations that you can use in your training routine. You can do all of these with your visualized target. You can also practice all of these on the heavy bag for an even better somatic release. Mm, excuse me. Working something out there. Uh, so do please do find the tools that are work for, working for you. And as I mentioned before, for those who are advanced, we will switch stance, boom, in this class and execute those knees from southpaw stance as well. If you're not comfortable in southpaw and you're, or you're just starting, stick with one of the first knees. Stick with a long knee or just a high knee. Stay in uh, orthodox stance if you'd like, if it's too challenging and you feel like you're getting a little lost out here with our pace. Remember, it's about challenging you to grow every day. It's not about competing with each other. We're only competing with ourselves and that's how we can continue to make progress and not burn out. But let's get into it. That's enough chatting. A whole bunch of technical stuff today. We gotta get some action going, right? And presets, sack life daily, one minute, three minute rounds, one minute breaks. Let's do this thing, get the tunes going. Bam. There they are. All right, square up with that visualized target. We're gonna get this timer started and make sure you've got water. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth on those strikes. And 
dial in that intensity. We're gonna start, like I said, with the fundamentals. Jab and cross. Square up and let's get it going. Visualize that target. Guard high. Start shifting that body weight forwards and backwards. Step into the one, two. Down that center line. Guard high, chin tucked. One, two. Down the center line. Hit that dummy in the face. Square up with them. Make sure when you turn in for the jab and the cross, you're turning those fists over. Tucking the thumb under the top two fingers. Wrist nice and straight and drive through. Use the body. Use that. Use that body rotation for power. And bring them back to guard. Guard high. Chin tucked. Sink on those knees just a little bit. That'll help with rotation. Our body weight should be on the balls or the feet. Not flat footed. Not on the heels. Keep them going. Keep it moving. Get nice and close. Knock those lies out of that depression dummy's face. Visualize them. Visualize doing damage. As you get stronger, depression gets weaker. Keep going. Hit him in the head. One, two. Square up. And we're going to start bringing in that first knee, the long knee. So this attack is a little bit longer range than our punches. That knee will get a little bit deeper out there. So we're going to go from the cross. So step in for the jab. Rotate for the cross, and from here, we're gonna chop this hand down and drive through the hips, driving that knee forward. I'll show you what I mean. Step in for the one, rotate for the two. Now drive, drive that knee forward, swinging it through the hips, and then stepping back into your balanced stance. Here we are in Muay Thai position. Let's do just the long knee. We're gonna reach forwards with that cross hand, chop down and send the knee forward, letting the hips Hips go forward as the shoulders go back. Counterweight with the shoulders. Step in for the long knee. Boom, there it is. And back. Return to your balanced stance after each long knee strike. Let's give them a one, two, long knee. One, two, long knee. And back to stance. One, two, long knee. And back to stance. Remember, swing through those hips. Drive that knee straight forward. Oosh. And chop that arm and let the shoulders go back as a counterweight. Return to your balanced orthodox stance. One, two. One, two. Visualize that target. Hit him with the one, two. Keep going. And we're going to go from here. Long knee strike. And back to stance. Square up with that target. One, two. Long knee. Whoosh. Exhale through that strike. Inhale through the nose. Long knee strike. Let's go. Whoosh. And back, square up, work that balance, chin tucked, long knee, whoosh, and back, shoulders go back as the hips go forward for balance, long knee, whoosh, and back, you can add some more power to it by sliding that rear foot back, giving it longer distance to build speed, whoosh, and back, back to stance, that's the end of round one, catch your breath, drink some water, shout out to Craig Williams, kickboxer, out there for tuning in, appreciate your support, man. Ooh, we're getting into some knee strikes. Maybe we won't go southpaw. Let's see how it goes. A little bit technical today. I think we might have enough to get through all three rounds without working southpaw. If you'd like to work southpaw and you're super comfortable already, feel free to switch that stance. Remember, it's just the mirror image of our orthodox stance. Orthodox, your dominant hand is in the back. Southpaw, dominant hands in the front. If you're right handed. If you're left handed, then you're naturally a southpaw. Typically. We've got 15 seconds before we square back up. Remember to visualize that target and work on accuracy as well as we're training. Really visualize con making contact with that depression dummy's face, making contact with his guts as you drive that knee through. In this next round, we're gonna work the high knee in to the equation. So that means we're gonna swing through this time, leaving our shoulders where they are, right? We're gonna keep our shoulders curled in that defensive position, chin tucked, hips curled, knees bent. And we're gonna swing this knee up through the body, hinge in through the body, driving it straight up, keeping that chin tucked, and chopping the arm at the same time. To get more height on that knee, hit him in the head, hit him in the face, we're gonna lift on that front calf, shifting that weight onto the front calf and lift up, boom, for a little additional height on that high knee. Exhale through the strike, step in for a high knee strike to the face of that depression dummy. Whoosh, one, and again, whoosh, 
two, point those toes down, flex that foot down. That'll make that knee even sharper. And keep it moving here in your balanced stance. Shift your weight forwards and backwards. Step in for the high knee strike. Whoosh, boom, and back to stance. Keep it square, keep it balanced, keep it tight. Hit them with the one, two. Down the center pipe and high knee to the face. There it is, back to stance. One, two. High knee to the face. And back to stance, keep it square. One, two. High knee to the face. And square up, keep it nice and tight. Now you can do this slow, you don't have to do it at my pace. You can do nice and slow, step in. Reach across the face, sometimes that helps prep for the shot. Reach across the face with your cross hand, and then chop that hand straight down as you swing up through the hip, boom, driving that knee up into the chin of your opponent. Hit him with the one, two, square up. Nice high knee to the chin, boost. Boom, there it is. Remember to lift on that front foot for additional height on that strike. One, two, and high knee to the face. There it is, square up. Now we're gonna go one, two, high knee, see if we can put them together. One, two, high knee, square up. Make it a three hit combo. Guard high the whole time. One, two, high knee, square up. One, two, high knee, square up. Keep it tight, keep it balanced. One, two, high knee, square. Back to stance, orthodox. One, two, high knee. Work for you, remember what you're fighting for. One, two, drill some fundamentals. One, two, one, two. Let's go, jab, cross. Turn those fists over. Tuck the chin into the shoulder. Hit him with a three hit combo. Right down that center line, chin tuck. Back to stance, now after the three. One, two, three. Want you to chop into a high knee from here. Whoosh, bring that knee up high. Right up the center line, hit him. When he doesn't see it coming, one, two, three, high knee, and back to stance, one, two, three, high knee, there it is, and that's the end of round two, drink some water, catch your breath, check in on you, Cork City Outlaws, appreciate that support, thank you for being here, Woo. even if you're not taking the class, even if you're just stepping, stopping by to say hello, or to give a wave, or to share a moment, I appreciate that moment, this time is all we have. that you guys who are training are pushing yourself, challenging yourselves to your level so you can get that growth in. Remember, there's no growth in the comfort zone. We can only grow when we give ourselves a challenge, so do it for you if you wanna move forwards out here. The better you become, the stronger you become, the more help you can offer to others, and the better state of mind you can be in when you offer that help. Ooh, nine seconds. We're gonna break that angled knee down. Maybe we'll do, uh, we'll pick up these knees in the next high intensity session from southpaw position. So today we stay all orthodox. Back to stance, hit them with a one, two. Down that center line, we're gonna work the angled knee this time. Bring the ankle up and the knee up on the same plane on one side. That means you're gonna have to shift your body weight over to that front foot, that's totally fine. Ankle and knee come up on one side, and then we're gonna torque through. Whoosh, bring that knee around, right? Almost like we're doing a check, right? We're checking a kick, but this time we're bringing it up on a horizontal plane, and then we're cranking through to drive that knee into the rib cage of our opponent. Hit him with the one, two, back to square, and now angled knee. Ankle and knee come up, chop through, right? Chop that arm to counterbalance the weight, and drive that knee in up on an angle right into those ribs. Square up, chin tuck the whole time. One, two, square up and angled knee. There it is. If we rotate the body, the torso in the opposite direction for that clamping force, we can get more and more power out of that knee, even without a bag for resistance. Let's do it. One, two, square up, angled knee. Back to stance. One, two, square up, angled knee. Back to stance, one, two, square up, angled knee, back to stance, keep that chin tucked for balance, nice and centered, and remember when you step in, torque through that hip, swing through that hip, on a diagonal, work that knee right into the rib cage on that depression dummy, let's go, one, two, angled knee, back to stance, one, two, angled knee, 
back to stand. So let's try and put that knee together with the one, two, just like we did with the other ones. One, two, now right out of the cross, bunch of chop on a diagonal, and bring that knee around, make it a three hit combo. One, two, three is the angled knee, back to stance. One, two, three, back to stance. One, two, three, back to stance. Keep those knees bent, right? Centered, nice and tucked on the chin. One, two, angled knee. One, two, angled knee. Back to stance. Put them together, make them flow. One, two, knee. Let's go. One, two, three. Back to stance. Keep it square, keep it tight. Visualize that target. One, two, knee. Strike to the ribs. Keep going. One, two, knee. Back. One, two, knee. Back, keep the guard high on the lead hand. Protect that head the whole time. Hit that depression dummy in the face. Let's go. Exhale, arc through those strikes. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, knee. Now any knee you'd like. Straight knee if you want. Long knee. High knee if you want. High knee. Angled knee, let's do it. And that is the end of round three. Hopefully you've been equipped with three more knee strikes today. Three more tools that you can put into your arsenal and use in your personal training routine. And even if you're not training to compete in the ring, shout out to DJ Sean Fitz, thank you for being here as well. Even if you're not competing in the ring, uh, you can still add these tools to your arsenal to use in your creative right training sessions. Mix those knee strikes into your training, your personal training session in your bonus round. Play with them, work with them. Feel where those knees flow into opposite moves. Every move can feed itself. You get super creative out here and the more creative you get with that training routine, the more entertaining you can make it to yourself. And one of the things that helps us stay consistent and constantly meet our goals and move forwards is to make sure we keep it fun. Right? We gotta keep it entertaining. We gotta tap into that play, right? Because we need play as an adult. Too many of us get distracted by business, by work, and other things, the stresses of life, and we forget that play is an essential ingredient to happiness out here. So make sure you find time, find those moves that you enjoy, find the ones you can work on and grow with, as well as have fun with. And until next time, I'll catch you. Same sack time, same sack channel, same sack life. Sack man out. Woo!